Hola, hola. I'm Trek with two Ks, and this is the weekend crypto. And so, hold on, let me pull this hood back because I feel like how it sounds as well. But anywho, um, again, I'm Trek with two Ks. This is the weekend crypto. And basically, it's the roll up that's going to be playing out here on a Monday that I'm getting into things that happened over the weekend. Um, I didn't get to pay attention to the news cycle like I wanted to because I was playing soldier this weekend. If you know me, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but nonetheless, I do got some things that are going on that I think um, do have some gravity to them. Um, so let's just get into this first story. And the first one um, I caught what was this last night, which was uh, Treasure um, having a, a phishing attack situation happen via MailChimp. Um, so another email situation, not necessarily where the wallet, the hard wallet itself has been hacked or something and people know, you know, who has what in their wallet, but you are now on the radar of, hey, um, some scammer, somebody who bought the list, some no-name person does know that you bought a product from a crypto-related company. So uh, I think that in the bigger part of this, there definitely is something else going on um, that doesn't necessarily, isn't apparent on the, on the, on the surface of it, but uh, this is definitely something uh, more coordinated going on. There are other couple other things that have been happening as far as hacks and stuff that really start have um, had me question what is going on in the hacker community. And I'm talking about the black hat folks, the scammer folks and what they're doing. Um, but I, I can't run too deep into that, but I do want to point out that this treasure situation isn't that the wallets were hacked, isn't that um, people's uh, uh, valued amount of crypto and what they had has been put out in public. It's that there was a um, email leak. And so now, and through the, the MailChimp phishing attack that was happening, which apparently um, there's a number of um, crypto related companies that are having this happen to them, or at least they're being targeted. Um, I'm bringing up the Twitter posts and shout outs to Rick, Dud Rick Dudley, by the way, because I'm um, I have him on my list and he's one of the people that I follow and he had posted about this. Now, um, I want to say this though, if you are on Twitter or, or let's say you're not on Twitter and you're not trying to like uh, get through the noise and the BS or it's like, oh, there's too much, you know, stuff going on, start making a list. Filter down the people you're actually looking to follow who are giving you high value content or that alpha stuff, or at least what you're interested in knowing more about. That's why I have a number of lists on my Twitter um, account. And Rick Dudley is one of the people I follow that got me to this story. Nonetheless, moving on, moving on. I actually had to write these things down, right? Um, jump into this next one. And that is this Binance story, which basically Binance does a partnering with the Grammy Awards. That's the whole music um, awards um, showcase. And... When I was reading through this article, it kind of had me um, looking at it going like, what's this move about? But if you looked at Binance's track record over the last like 24 months, even during this uh, C-19 period, um, as well as other larger exchanges like um, FTX, um, like Crypto.com, you see that there's a spending spree going on right now. Why? Because what this road of mass adoption looks like is the companies that are trying to establish themselves in the space, they got to go out and go beyond just the, the community of, um, you know, us believers or users um, of the crypto thing. And they got to go to the other people who are outside who have no idea how a wallet works or who have no idea what the difference is between proof of work or proof of stake. Um, and this particular article right here that's on Crypto Slate does get into, hey, they just did a, a, a partnership with the Grammys that, and they haven't really given out too many details, but this is something that as the year goes on, there's going to be something that really big that comes out of this. For those who are holding, you know, certain tokens, again, not again, but first off, not financial advice. I'm just some guy on the internet. This might work out in your favor. I don't personally know. Um, I don't have any of this stuff, so, you know, whatever on that. But nonetheless, um, if you've been looking at what Binance has been doing over the last, like I said, uh, 24 months about, they've been maneuvering 
not just here in the States. So what was that? The 200 million um, that went to um, Forbes magazine so they could get a seat on the magazines, like um, managing um, group of people. Um, they did the, um, they're heavy in Africa. So like Nigeria, Ghana, um, uh, what is it? South Africa. There's a couple other countries. Uh, Binance is heavy out there. Okay, they are putting out the money and they also doing stuff on the football side. When I say football, I'm talking about the international football, not American football, right? International football, football, yeah. Like those numbers for the audience and for the spending that they do is, is, is <laughs> American football is nowhere near <laughs> what's going on with that level. And so it makes sense to me that they also made this move with um, the Argentinian company. I mean, sorry, um, Clubhouse. Sorry for the football folks. I'm not even a sports person, honestly. But nonetheless, right, Binance is making moves is the point of what I'm trying to get to and why I brought this particular story up. And they're doing it now um, with the Grammys, which when you look at what they're doing, they're going for the pop culture stuff. Because you got to think sport icons. You got to think things that are related to TV and viewership. And you're now you're talking about music. They're going after the things that like you at some point are going to have to come across in your day. Um, as far as like what a target uh, or a cross market um, section would be, you're either going to be in sports, you're going to watch something on TV, or you're going to listen to some kind of music. Those three things right there, like that market caption, that market cap, you know, market size right there, like you got to hit a number of people. But nonetheless, I'm moving on with this next thing. Um, what was I going to next? Oh, the Seek and Gary Gensler and like what he's been talking about. Here's an interesting thing that I thought about when I was reading through this article. You notice you're not hearing nothing from um, what's her name, um, the crypto mom anymore. Like I haven't seen or heard any speeches or any like little um, sound bites coming out of her, you know, side of the SEC of late. And I'm not going to say of late. I'm going to say like, what, the last month, two months and change? I haven't heard anything that came out of, uh, from her. And I don't know if that's one of those like, hey, no more, you know, public um, sound bites. Just stay in your office, do your job, you good. Uh, but in regards to what he's doing right now and what he's pushing, he, like, I read through this and I was like, hold on, like, the, this don't kind of really make sense for the logic that they're trying to use to say to people, to say to the industry and the C5 companies, right? The central uh, financial institutions. So we're talking about the exchanges and we're talking about companies that are um, maybe marketed as D5, but they're really centralized, okay? And this idea of, well, we need to know more about your customers and we need to know what they have also, if you are being a custodian of your customers' crypto assets, you need to count that on your ledger, and we need to see how much money you have. And I thought about this, and I'm like, wait, so you need more of my information to tell me how to better use my stuff? How does that work? I already know what I'm doing. How does me giving you more of my information better help me? And when I when I kind of read between the lines on it, when he talks about the investors, where where is this line at? Um, there's a line. Okay, this this right here. I read through this and I was like, wait, this this is just like soup salad. Like you ain't really say nothing, but if you kind of read through it, what he's really saying, he's not talking. He's not really talking about protecting the retail level investor. This is more about we need to get more of your information so we can do our deep dive level of analysis as far as how the industry is going to look at being able to get the granular level data on people's spending habits, being able to trace um, funds from A to B or A to B all the way down to D, um, and then being able to do, let's say, for example, what Robinhood kind of does in regards to how it takes in the uh, end user's money, there's a trade thing that happens on the back end, but there's a third party company that does that and they front run the traders and uh, the traders on Robinhood. 
that's what this reads like to me, where it's like, well, we need to know more of the information in order to be able to get more of the data to understand how to make this new growing industry and this new amount of money coming into the space on how we can help the, the Wall Street daddy type folks and what I also call the Wall Street kid type folks, those new um, startup companies that are backed by the VCs on Wall Street and stuff. I think that what he's really trying to say without really saying it is, we need to make the rules in the space more conducive that the, the, the money people can actually <laughs> take better advantage of the retail folks. That's bottom line, how it reads to me. But again, I'm just some bald headed guy on the internet, right? So moving on to this next joint, um, I literally had to write these things down on pieces of paper, man. Moving on to this one. Th this one, oh man, this this one, I, I had to read through the article and I know I'm going through um, Crypto Slate a lot, um, but this next one I promise will not be from Crypto Slate. So Snoop Dogg is doing a Twitter space with Charles Hoskins. Now, at first, this sounds like it is all about Snoop and Charles. And then you kind of read into the article and they're like, yeah, so Snoop did this. He dropped the album, which I like Snoop has nostalgia for me because that's my era. But if you're saying like Snoop as a rapper is the greatest or like Snoop drops like these super dope albums on some like J. Cole or Nas level, I'm showing my age. Nah, dog. And then to top it off, you could have still got the album without buying the NFT. But we're not going to run down that rabbit hole, right? Um, the basic thing of what they're going on about is like, hey, Snoop is doing all of this stuff here. And they take out a quote or two from Snoop. And in the beginning, when like things started coming out publicly, like Snoop was moving into the crypto space, the metaverse, the NFT stuff. At first, I was kind of on the, on the bandwagon. I was feeling the hype. All right, I'm not gonna lie. And then I started like actually listening to some of the stuff that he said. And then I also started looking at how the the marketing touch points were being pushed. And I was like, man, he don't know jack about how this stuff work. He just has a really, really, really good management and um, biz development team and a, a, um, a branding um, team behind him that, that they, yo, Shout outs to those folks. That's what I'm gonna say. Shout outs to them. Why? Because they doing their thing to get those deals, to get the word out, to make this thing look grander than ever. And so now what is it? Everyone looks, oh, look, yo, Snoop knows what he's doing in the, in the uh, Web3 stuff. Snoop is doing what he's doing in the metaverse. Nah, dog. <laughs> pun intended, yo, pun intended. It's the team. It is the team, people. This is the stuff I be saying to folks all the time about the marketing and branding and the narrative of like how this space is moving. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this one out there too. Um, I just started reading a book um, from the Block Size Wars. Yo, even though I was in the space back then at that time for the, like, the way it put things into perspective of what was playing out behind the scenes between like Roger Ver and like um, Ant Miner and the, the whole thing with the devs and Bitcoin Core, there was a whole bunch of marketing going on and narrative changing and promotion going on behind the scene to make it look another way in public. I think this is the same thing. Not saying it has the same dynamics, but I think that um, Snoop's team is really good and effective at what they doing, okay? Um, and I'm going to close it out on this one as far as this particular story with Snoop and Charles. Yeah, they're going to have this Twitter space thing. But what is this really about? You get to the bottom of this article. I'm not even going to read through the other stuff, right? You get through the bottom of this article, and it's right here. It's right here. Um, basically, this is Clay Nation, which was a project that was minted on the uh, Cardano chain. And so they throw in the whole thing about like, hey, there's the, F um, the NFT thing that they sold out on. And now we're going to do this next deal. And it's going to be Claymation stuff also. And Snoop is going to have this character. So basically what we're really promoting here is here's a new licensing deal 
that's coming out of the Snoop um, brand. This is what this really is. Because when I was trying to figure out like, well, what, what does Charles get out of this? Yes, there's a cross branding thing happening as far as bringing um, Cardano via Charles into another type of um, marketing or like expanded demographic of people who weren't paying attention. Cause now Cardano is about to be cool because Snoop is associated with it. But again, the real focus here is about the um, Clay Nation. It might be a hit for somebody who already got something. It might not be a hit. I don't know. I don't have any of that stuff. Just letting y'all know. I'm not out here balling at all in this crypto life. Don't believe the hype. Moving on to this next thing, though. Moving on to this next and last thing. It is the Caitlin Long. Um, so, oh, man, how am I going to break this one down? Um, shout out to my boy Ryan Coop because he was the one who just threw this in the group um, a little bit earlier tonight and then I happened to see and I said you know let me run through and see what she's really trying to say in this um, I don't agree with what she's saying by the way I'm just going to be clear on that and this is out of Decrypt um, news so basically she was at an event or they might be taking it from some kind of conversation she was having somewhere but nonetheless um she basically is saying, hey, there's going to be three types of camps that are in this crypto space because of how the regulations are going to come down. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep beating this drum. I'm so going to keep beating this drum. It is not that regulators are sneaking things in or doing squirrely, like whatever kind of things with these regulations. The OFAC report came out last year. The IMF's um, digital assets report, I might be saying the name wrong, but the IMF also put out a report in the same month of October as the OFAC report, and it spells out, hey, in order for us to be more secure in not allowing the people to go off and like do their own thing with money and currency, you need to start regulating it to um, the businesses, and then you need to start doing things that will deter the people from getting into crypto. So slow down the adoption. She makes this a particular point um, that with the regulation coming down, um, there's going to be three types of camps, and in that it's going to be the people who want no regulation, the Wall Street daddy um, and the Wall Street kid folks, where she comes from that camp, who are going to want regulation to quote, do better business. And then there is her camp, which is like, well, we want to do something different because she has a company that's called, what is it? Avent Av uh, Avente Financial, but it's now called Custodia. And it's basically like, hey, there is a niche market right now of cryptocurrency um, related companies that can't deal with the traditional banking industry because of how the regulations and stuff work. So we can be their bank for them. And in my mind, the way that sounds to me, especially because it's um, one of the things that um, the way, at least the way they took this quote from her and making it sound like crypto people want no type of um, security, no type of um, rules, as far as let's work with community policing. Like King says this all the time about community policing, right? And so this framing of, well, the, there's a camp that wants no rules whatsoever, that's not the case. And then to put it where she's making it sound like what she's looking to do is separate from what the Wall Street folks are looking to do. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me, folks. It really doesn't because She's like saying that she, she wants to be a bank in the sense of, hey, I want to be able to operate within this industry um, of the financial sector, but I want to help the crypto companies cross over into the more traditional side. So basically, you're just a 2.0 version of the bank because eventually you end up having to follow the same rules and regulations. Why? Because what government is actually going to allow you to be able to um, just freely move about, right? That, that's not how the traditional financial system has been set up to work so far. And that's not how governments are going to look to let people just do willy-nilly. I think that there will be 
the people who are in, um, I call it the walled garden, versus the people who are outside of the walled garden. We're going to be the minority, <laughs> like dead ass. We're going to be the minority. Um, and, and so I, I think that this was more so in a talking point. Honestly, this article to me, to me, was more so of a um, advertisement for her company, um, Custodia, which is basically looking to be a bank for crypto related companies. Um, and I wasn't a fan of how they framed it as far as the, 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 the non-regulatory regula regulatory camp where like, oh, it's just a free for all craziness. Like, no, like community policing is a thing. We do it now, y'all. Like we really do. And I think we can going forward um, be more effective at it. And we don't need the top down um, private company, government agency, people we didn't vote for telling us um, what we should and shouldn't do with our finances. But that's just my little thing on how I'm looking at it. Looking at it. Nonetheless, um, I'm Trek with two Ks and this is the weekend crypto and, uh, oh, closing out this way, right? Uh, don't forget to share, like, leave a comment. Am I talking on my ass? Am I saying the wrong thing? Am I saying the right thing? Even if you thumbs it down, I'm still cool with that. Why? Because I'm growing and I'm improving on how I'm doing this stuff as far as making these segments for the weekend crypto. Um, and don't forget also to check out the live stream of Gentlemen of Crypto on Monday through Friday around 10-ish. Um, what else? Oh, by the time y'all see this, I'll be on my way to Miami. So I'm going to be down there for a number of different events. Um, Monerotopia I'm going to be at. I'm speaking at Shitcoin um, Conference. Um, I'll be also be at Bear Arms and Bitcoin, and I'm going to be around for Bitcoin 2020, Bitcoin Miami 2022, whatever, and a couple of other events that are going on. Oh, and uh, what's the other one? Um, what's the other one? Uh, the one with Zay and Lamar and them. Oh, Black, Black Bitcoin Millionaires. I'm going to be around for that one too. Um, nonetheless, if you see me, hit me with an hola, hola. Let's have a conversation. You know, we might uh, vibe, we could build on something. And that's what it is, y'all. I'm sorry, I'm running long on this one. My bad. But until the next one, y'all have a good week. And I'm going to keep trying to bring all these stories that kind of fly under the radar. All right, y'all. One.